So a question I like to ask myself after I have a drive with Tesla's full self-driving beta is what if I was to fall asleep during this drive, what would have happened? Well, in this drive you're about to watch, it would have been perfectly fine. I could have fallen asleep and I would have gotten to my destination, no problem at all. Now, if you end up enjoying this video, please hit like and get subscribed. So a few things to talk about. This is a zero intervention, zero disengagement drive. So you'll see in this drive, I do absolutely nothing. And it is awesome. It's one of my favorite drives for a couple of reasons. It's not super complicated, but you can see here, I did this on purpose. I started off with this left turn here, but this is not a drive I was doing to just do for YouTube. This is actually a drive I had to make. I was just going to AT&T to uh, trade a phone. And it's so nice to see what beta is capable of in a normal everyday drive versus a stress test, which is what I do in some of my other videos. The first turn here, uh, I think is really impressive. Not a ton of cars, but still the, the, the Tesla handles it really well. So let's talk about the next update to beta coming soon on Monday, August 29th. Beta 10.69.1 is going to, at first, the first thousand people uh, in the beta program, and then it's going to roll out if there's no bugs found to 10,000 people. And then about a week after that, we're going to get 10.69.2, and that's going to go out to wide beta, which is the 100,000 people. Now, will people be added that don't have beta yet? I would think so, but we don't know for sure. That's just me guessing. And some exciting news for some of you, strikes will be reset. So if you don't know if you drive beta or autopilot or whatever, and you're looking at your phone or you don't have your hands on the wheel, or uh, sometimes it's a mistake. Some people say they've had a bug where it just gives them a strike. If you get five of those strikes, then you are kicked out of beta. You can no longer use it. So you have the beta software, but you can't actually use it. And there is a strike reset coming. So that's really nice. Just try not to get those strikes. I have zero. I don't know why I haven't had any of the bugs that some people have. But uh, yeah, so that happens to some people. So we can fast forward through some of this drive here. Uh, most of this right here is a straight road. We are on the average setting on this one. I did double check that. And we're going to go through downtown. Uh, again, I didn't plan the route. I just planned that first left turn. That's really the only thing I planned. And then the rest of it, I didn't exactly know where we were going to go. But we're not in downtown for long, but it does handle some nice situations down here with pedestrians and different things. So first up, as we approach downtown, we're going to take this left. It's uh, unprotected, and it turns yellow there, but the car does a great job. It doesn't hesitate or anything, just moves directly through that light there, and I was really happy with that. Now moving into downtown, we have a right turn coming up, and you can see the car waits for all of these parked cars. That is not a right turn lane, and then it moves into this right turn lane as it opens up. In older, way, way older versions, that lane where all the cars were parked, the Tesla would actually move into that lane when it shouldn't. So maybe because all those cars were parked there, we couldn't, uh, but it didn't even try to go over there, so that's nice. Now we're at this red light, and we stop here. You can turn right on red, but there are some pedestrians moving towards the crosswalk. They were in blue, so the car waits for them. And then we have some kids and a parent there, and the car waits for them as well. And then we end up getting the green. So they did not cross the street, but because of the way they were moving towards the street, the Tesla just assumed they were going to cross in front of the car, and it waited for all of them. Now, as we move through here, all of the acceleration, the braking, all of that feels really good on this drive. I really enjoyed <laughs> pretty much every part of it. Uh, there was nothing, well, there's one thing coming up that I disliked, uh, but you'll have to see. It's it's closer to the end, but I did allow the car to do it. So here's one that sometimes the car, it's not the greatest move. When somebody's turning in front of you, sometimes the Tesla takes way too long to get back up to speed. But in this one instance, uh, I did think it was pretty appropriate. Although I will say I have experienced that on this version. So it's not something that's fixed. It's just uh, the way that it was this one time. Now, coming up to this next intersection here, we are actually supposed to move to the left and you can be in this lane and go left, but the car messes it up. It accidentally goes right and messes up the nav and the car slows down pretty significantly, but it puts its speed back up quick enough that I don't need to do anything here. It reroutes and handles it gracefully. It doesn't mess up the reroute, doesn't do anything weird. It just moves up to this next part here. So it was a mistake by the car, but it was handled really well. I still didn't need to do anything. It rerouted all by itself and uh, takes this left turn successfully. So we take that left there, little hesitation on that one, but really not bad. Moves away from the parked cars on the side, does a really good job. It's good, good spacing and everything uh, for the parked cars on the road here. Now in this right turn, you'll see the car makes its complete stop at the stop sign, actually a little behind the line. And then it moves up, it starts to creep. The creep feels really, really good. Uh, and you can see kind of how much into the road we are. Actually not at all, not really even much into that bike lane. That's a really good position there. We have the pedestrian, as this box truck moves through, the Tesla decides, let's take it. And the acceleration is really good there to get out of everybody's way. 
Now we're going to take this left and here's where things get really interesting. So coming up to this semi here, we have to move out of the way. The Tesla basically parks there <laughs> and kind of moves out of the way. As soon as the semi is gone, the Tesla moves back out and you can probably see that's what I didn't like so much. We were really close to that red car. The ultrasonics were picking it up. It was far away enough that I allowed it, but it wasn't very comfortable. Now coming up to this two-way stop, here is where we can still have a little bit of awkwardness. So the car is really careful at two-way stops to look for cross traffic. So we creep real far, almost to the middle of that inter intersection before the car continues. So it was fine, but it can be a little strange. And then moving through all of this tight stuff here, beautifully done, really smooth. There's cars parked all over the place. We just kind of squeeze right through all of that. And it feels really good, really natural, not too close to any of that. Now this left turn, I knew we were almost there and I was like, okay, now here's where the car's gonna mess it up. It's gonna mess up my zero intervention, zero disengagement drive. But it actually did a great job, even with this little median divider thing for uh, pedestrians crossing. It was really awesome. So this drive, it was really exciting. I loved it, very comfortable on top of just doing everything safely and correctly. And then this is our destination. So the car is gonna slow to a stop. So I take over here and then I pull in all by myself. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, leave those down below and you will see me in full self-driving beta in the next video.